like it. Hi everyone, so yes, I'm back in the conservatory again because if you remember in my last video where I did the windowsills, I was telling you I was getting neighbours and I was about to fit the blinds. I couldn't do that until I'd got the windowsills in place. But if you notice, this is a lean-to conservatory, which means the windows are sloping. And for the last two years, I've been ringing around every now and again, trying to get a sensible quote. And I kept getting 1,500 pounds just for two of these either side, which I really think is ridiculous. And after a lot of research, I realized actually, this is going to work if I did this myself. So hopefully I can help you save a lot of money. I've saved 1,353 pounds and 29 pence doing this. And all I did was buy some clips from eBay for the top for £13.95 for 100 So keep on watching if you're in the same boat as what I was. So to start off with, some of you may remember from a very old video, these DIY blackout roof blinds that I made. And sadly it was either these or the side blinds because they were getting in the way of the new attachments. It had to all come down. So I still need to think of an alternative for this. But I'd happily take on any recommendations on how to reuse these because I'm not going to get rid of them. And someone who really helped me with some advice and reassurance on this project was actually my father-in-law. Now, I don't really mention him that often because it sounds confusing when I say the carpenter's daughter, but he does help me as equally as my own dad. And he's always been at the other end of the phone if I've got any questions. But it was him that actually put us onto direct blinds a couple of years ago for our own bathroom. And I didn't realize blinds were that cheap, but sadly them and many others that I contacted, they just didn't do them. But he did find the perfect clips that worked for me. So a few pointers that he reminded me to bear in mind when I ordered these blinds were to have the pulley on the longest side of the window and for them to only open towards the longest side of the window because if it was the other way around, it wouldn't work, there'd be too much overhang and they definitely wouldn't sit right. So as this is a second-hand conservatory, there were already screw holes in there. So I'd just use those as a bit of a guide to screw the new fixtures there. And for this, I'd recommend you following your manufacturer's instructions, but I found attaching these so much easier than any ordinary blinds. And instead of using the existing screws that came with the pack, I just used some black drywall screws. I'll leave a link to the ones below. You can't actually see them when the blinds are up. So that's why I didn't really care about the color. But in the pack, they aren't self-tapping screws. So these ones should help you with a conservatory. And self-tapping screws means you don't have to create any pilot holes. So it's just much easier. And instead of doing any measurements, I just use the window frames in the middle as a guide to evenly space the extra brackets in between. And once I'd slotted the header rail in, all I then needed was a hand screwdriver just to tighten the little silver screws that actually come with it. They're already attached to the header rail. And it probably took me about half an hour for both windows. I couldn't believe how much easier this was than it looks. And then it was time to get the fabric slats out and conveniently they're all rolled up just to prevent creasing and it also comes with a chain as well but you don't need to worry about that until later and now I'm just slotting each slat into each hook on the head rail and I just repeated that until everyone was hung up and I found it very convenient that they sent two spares with it as well because I did find I got dirt on two of them and then one thing I need to point out is notice they are much longer than the actual window. I purposely ordered about 10 centimeters long than the actual window. And again, this was my father-in-law's tip. That way I was able to have some excess to fold over later on to create a seam allowance for when I shortened them. I couldn't wait to test them. Ooh, I like it. Oh, it is filming. Thank goodness that'd be embarrassing if it wasn't. <laughs> nice. And I'm sure this probably wasn't necessary because any sort of kinks would just fall out eventually. I just wanted to go over each one with a steamer. That way, when I do come to shorten them, it helped them be more precise. It's now been two weeks almost since I've filmed anything on my vertical blinds. And that's because I had to order some attachments. And my father-in-law actually suggested these where I don't have to make any sewing stitches or anything like that. And I've got a box here of 100 that cost me £13.95 on eBay with shipping. I'll leave the link below. But more recently, I actually posted what I'd done on Facebook. And then a handful of people said I would have saved myself so much more time and money if I told the blind company my exact measurements. But I have asked so many blind companies, including this one in the past, whether they did a lean-to blind, and they said no. 
So if you've got a different answer, then stick with that. But this is my way, and I'm still saving a lot of money. Apparently it worked out at one pound per strip to be shortened, but I've got 80. So if it was gonna cost me 80 quid, I'd rather have done this anyway, because it looks like less than a day's work. So just ignore the washing machine in the background, but I've cut a piece of paper to the width of this strip, and each one comes with a stick. It's like a lollipop stick. So we're gonna fold this over to the length that we want. Let's just say there, this exercise. Then you've got your rod piece stick thing. Stick that in there. And then grab the trim and we're just gonna slide it on. And there it sticks into place. So what I'm gonna do is have this flap facing outside of the window and then once I've done all of the slats, then I'm gonna start cutting things off. I'm not gonna cut things off until I absolutely have to at the end. So I didn't actually use a tape measure for this. All I did was just rest a three millimeter piece of card on the windowsill just to create a slight bit of clearance. You could go slightly thicker. My father-in-law said he likes half an inch of a clearance at the bottom. So I just detached it at the top and just raised each slat where the bottom of the hem would just be touching that cardboard and just create a fold at the top where the clip would be. And luckily there's already clips at the top now, so you can use that as a guide. So I just did that one by one until all of them were done. And just moved that three millimeter cardboard along with me. And here's me pinching my fiance's hat because it got really hot in there. So this is what it looked like at this stage. So you can clearly see the excess. I'm glad that's done. And then once I was happy with all of the lengths, I did adjust the odd one, not many, but it's so easily done compared to hemming something and not being happy. And then I just took each one off and then I cut off the excess at the back with some sharp wallpaper scissors. I actually got mine for a pound at B&M, leaving about a two centimeter allowance. So I just eyeballed the whole lot. And then once I'd finished all that, it was time for the very final stage. And that was just to put the link chains on, just so they all connected together and ran smoothly. And that was it. So the next time you get a quote for a funny shaped window like this, Maybe think again before someone tries to rob you blind. So just bear in mind that my slope is very slight. There's probably about, looking at it, maybe 15 centimetres difference. So I hope that saves some of you a lot of time and money by not having to do hours of research like I did. And if you liked it, you found it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Poke and destroy, poke and destroy. I'm a boy, I wanna poke and destroy. Poke and destroy. Poke and destroy.